Hi guys, so I wanted to talk about a daunting experience um, I had in my first year of law school. And this happened when a big law firm came to talk to us um, fresh uh, students to tell us about what our life would be like at these big firms and in the next five, six years when we're practicing as attorneys. And the director shocked everyone in the room when he uh, practically said that um, by the time we graduate, um, robots, AI and machine learning would have taken over our jobs as attorneys and that uh, we're wasting our time, money and resources in qualifying as attorneys because we won't have a job. And I think he was, um, I think that was a bold statement to make and quite incorrect. What he should have said, and, and I hope to clarify, is essentially that attorneys aren't going anywhere. But what he, what he should have emphasized was the fact that um, IT is permeating every sector of the law and you're doing yourself an injustice if you do not uh, skill stack, which is having um, separate skills which are related. So whether it's IT, FinTech, uh, blockchain, whatever it is, sales, whatever it is, in addition to your, um, your law skills. So essentially that's what he was trying to say, which is that you're going to have to know IT one way or the other. And I know Harvard is running um, a course called Python for Lawyers. So um, C++ for lawyers and things like that. So you find like MIT, Pennsylvania and um, uh, and other universities are starting to offer IT courses with law, like postgrad and things like that. But even with that, um, a lot of universities haven't installed those programs yet. And so it's just all still up in the air. And I wanted to say like, okay, first of all, um, we're going to have to integrate IT and law and not to necessarily say that uh, we're going to be redundant. I think that's very inaccurate. But um, there, there are some important um, advantages to using IT and data and um, information technology skills. Um, some of them is like advancing efficiency and reducing costs to clients. So uh, big law firms obviously don't want that because obviously you're billing per hour and they want to make more bucks per hour. So they're not a fan of reducing costs to clients. So they're not a fan of making... Um, legal services, uh, consumer goods like um, retail retailers and things like that. So they're not a fan of that, but that's 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 essentially where we're going. People are preferring um, consumer legal services, consumer, they're preferring legal services as a consumer good and not a customized good. So they're signing tons of contracts. And so they'd rather have you uh, producing um, some way for them to draft their own contracts and ensure that they don't have to come see you for you to draft a, a custom-made contract. They'd rather have a template which they can use for um, whatever purposes they, they desire. And AI can assist us in accuracy and time constraints, especially in like um, civil procedure where you have deadlines, you have time um, timelines where you have to draft and send notices and things like that. And COVID has essentially shocked us all and countries which weren't prepared were definitely, um, they didn't have the infrastructure in place for online courts and um, online dispute resolution, which if, if uh, the legal sector had embraced these things um, uh, in the past 10 years, five years ago, we wouldn't have had the crisis we had, which is now we're going to have a backlog of cases because some of these cases could have been uh, resolved online, but because there was no infrastructure, that wasn't possible. And essentially, if you resist um, the influx of tech into the legal sector, you're going to get wiped out. Richard Suskid talks about it in his book, um, Lawyer of Tomorrow, An Introduction to Your Future. And he's essentially just saying, like, the, the, the lawyers who are embracing tech and things like that, they're going to be around for the next 10, 20, 50 years or so. And they're going to wipe out all the ones who resist the tech. Um, so let's just stop trying to jump on a moving train or stop a moving train. And robot judges, this is an interesting one I've like looked into. So they tried to do some experiments with the robot judges to see if they'd be more efficient in caseloads and preventing backlog of cases. And in as much as they were efficient, they were the most efficient in making sure that um, there was no backlog because obviously human judges get tired and exhausted. The only problem was they do reinforce, they increase uh, racial discrimination and reinforce um, stereotypes. And uh, contrary to popular belief and demand is that they actually increase prison sentences. Um, there's something that human judges have which robot judges don't. And it's, um, I, I would say it's, uh, it's humanity, which is that they sometimes have some leeway where they don't uh, give a prison sentence 
or they um, give less of a sense less of a sentence where whereas robots are one way or the other either it's 10 years or it's not and so in trying to prevent some discrimination and in or variation in sentences they give they actually reinforce stereotypes and racial discrimination um, smart contracts are something i really like um, which is quantity over customization um, I think that when, when it comes to smart contracts, I think, um, especially the business world, they're more appreciative of that because instead of going to see your attorney uh, every time you want to draft a contract, you'd rather have a template which you can use for whatever businesses it is. You just have to know that this person has to sign here, um, your client has to sign here, and then it's all sorted. Um, Cybercrime is a really important one. And I remember when we did uh, cyber law in our final year, uh, there was an issue where, with cyber crimes, um, the people handling the cases, the judges, the attorneys, they don't know how to um, how to um, collect evidence, electronic evidence, and things like that, because obviously, just navigating IT without the web is a challenge. So there's obviously a shortage and things like that. And all in all, we just shouldn't shy away from change. Change is daunting, but it aids growth and it really gives um, a niche in something which is so broad so you'd have like your public your private and your commercial law right and in that private that's where you're gonna have it's like small niches like fintech you can have cyber you can have blockchain and so many new emerging niches are popping up out of uh, out of the blue and so essentially the things like public law um uh, commercial law i think it's going to be uh, mandatory for everyone to just know the basics of that but it's also a great opportunity for um, those who want to niche down to go into that specific environment and not just take a shotgun approach in all three sectors of it.